I believe, I do believe, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, I believe, I do believe, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, truly I believe it, I believe in God the Almighty Lord Creator, mighty Lord Creator, mighty Lord Creator, I believe in God the Almighty Lord Creator, mighty Lord Creator, mighty Lord Creator, I believe, I do believe, truly I believe it. It. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. I believe I got with thee. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. I believe in Jesus, the Savior of the people. Savior of the people. Savior of the people. I believe in Jesus, the Savior of the people. Savior of the people. Savior of the people. I believe I do believe. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Truly. Truly, I believe it. I believe, I do believe. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. And I do believe in the power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. And I do believe in the power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. Power of the Spirit. I believe, I do believe. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. I believe, I do believe. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Truly, I believe it. Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to another Family Faith Formation Day, where this week we'll focus on something we say every week in worship, which this starts with a simple phrase, I believe. See, we say the Apostles' Creed week in and week out because it is a statement of faith that kind of makes what we all as a church agree on um, together. So the, the words of the Apostles' Creed are, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body. Well, let's figure out what they, all that even means. In our first lesson, our first story we're going to hear from Miss Sue is all about God being creator of heaven and earth. I wonder how God created heaven and earth. Let's go to Miss Sue and hear all about it. Thanks, Chip. We're going to talk a little bit about creation today. I know Chip's been talking to you, so we're going to read a story. Before God created the world, there was nothing at all except God. On the first day of creation, the wind of God blew. Whoosh, whoosh, swoosh. God said, let there be light. Crackle, boom, bang, and there was light. God saw the light was good, then split. God divided the light and the darkness into day and night. On the second day, God said, let there be sky. Pillow, billow, puff. There was a sky and God saw that the sky was good. On the third day, God said, let there be water and dry land. Drip, drop, Kerplunk, there was water. Crackle, crunch, and snap, there was dry land. And God saw that the water and the land were good. Then God said, let there be plants and trees. Rumble, rustle, pop, there were plants and trees. And God saw the plants and trees were good. On the fourth day, God said, let there be a sun and a moon and stars. Let there be a sun, glimmer, shimmer, shine. And there was a sun and a moon and a thousand of stars. God saw that the sun and the moon and the stars were good. 
On the fifth day, God said, let there be sea animals that swim and birds that fly. Wiggle, splish, splash. There were the sea animals. Flutter, putter, tweet. There were the birds. And God saw that the sea animals and the birds were good. On the sixth day, God said, let there be animals of every kind on the earth. Growl, prowl, snort. There were animals with fur. And skitter, scatter, creep. There were bugs. Slither, slather, hop. There were reptiles. God saw that the animals and bugs and reptiles were good. Then God said, let there be people on the earth. Blink, wink, hiccup. There were people on the earth. God saw that the people were very good. On the seventh day, God said, it is time to rest. Whew. Oh, whoosh. God and all of creation rested. So today, go outside and see God's creation. Look around and God made it all. Say a prayer and thanking God for all of the creation. We'll see you next time. That was a cool story. Thanks, Miss Sue. Now, I think Mrs. Robinson has a craft for us. Let's go over and see what she's doing. I'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks, Chip. Hi, guys. It's me again. Welcome to another family fun day. And we're talking the creation. And why not start at the very beginning? We're going to start with day one. And as we learned in the story, day one was all about, and God said, magic, 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 let there be light. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our number one. And how could we sit there and show that there's light? Well, we have to have dark. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make the dark on top. So I'm just gonna color this all in like this. Cause I love coloring messy. That's why you notice I didn't even cut out my number yet so I can be like super messy. Who wants to color in the lines? Psh, not me. Okay, and now we can cut it. Day one, here we go. There was darkness, and then God said, let there be light. I didn't work my timing on that one, but we are going to represent the light by this rectangle. And I guess if you want, you know, you know me. Magic, magic, magic. Here we go, glue that down. Day one, let there be light. And it was good. Then God sat around and thought, hmm, that's cool. What's next? You know what? Let's make some sky. That sounds good, right? Make some sky. We're making atmosphere, right? That's what we have to do, because you gotta start with atmosphere. Otherwise it's really boring, right? We do not want our earth to be boring, so we need an atmosphere. So we need sky, we need all of that air to breathe. And I guess we can go, do we want blue skies? Sure, we go blue. We can go sun, well now let's save that one. We'll go blue. Ooh, this is a pretty one. I don't know, maybe I'll go this one. And I'm gonna, color my two blue 
Ooh, I like it, it rhymes. My two is gonna be blue. And everybody knows why the sky's blue, right? Because you know, God totally designed it on purpose. That all the other colors of the rainbow come through and blue's the only one that knocks us back off. And that's why we see blue. All right, so how do I know that's sky? Because to me, that's just a blue two. Two blue, blue two. Well, we need clouds, of course. Every weatherman's dream. Look at all these cute little fluffy clouds. So you find a piece of paper with the fluffy clouds. And we're cutting out our fluffy clouds. And this takes a little bit. So you can watch. Do you ever notice when people cut that their mouth actually like kind of makes the movements too? I have no idea why, but I noticed that with everybody. Isn't it fun? See, eventually we'll have to teach Chip how to do like a little fast forward sort of, you know, rapid replay kind of thing. He loves me. I make such a mess. And that's because I'm having fun. Come on, clouds. These take forever to cut out. Pretty fluffy clouds. Are those your favorite? I like the fluffy clouds because they look like cotton candy and like cotton balls and all of that. Or do you like like the storm clouds that look all mad and angry? Look like a hammer. Or you have the ones that look like feathers. Those are cool clouds too. I like those clouds also. All right, I'm almost there. I'm, 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 cu I'm cutting, cutting clouds. And the nice thing is, is we don't really have to color them. These clouds are white, like little sheeps. Do you ever do that? Do you ever lay down in the yard and look up on a nice day and then you look at the clouds and then you sit there and you just use your imagination and you try and think of what they look like. And you're like, oh, that cloud looks like a sheep. Or like that cloud looks like a candy cane or a frog. And what else do we get from clouds? We get our rain and then we also get our favorite, the rainbow. Yay, rainbows. But that's later. That's not that's Noah's Ark. We're not going there yet. Right now God is still making earth. Because well, we don't know why. I'm thinking maybe he was bored and wanted company. He wanted people to be able to talk to and people to talk to him and help. And here we go, Boop. last one. And you can kind of, I mean, clouds are clouds. Some of them are kind of weird because it looks like they're kind of designed to go a certain way. If you want to, you know, follow the rules and stuff, but you know, it's me. I never follow those kind of rules. Boom. Let's put some clouds on our pretty little two. Our blue two. Not blue two, just blue two. I think that one's upside down, which is cool. Oh, I need a big cloud. Can't leave the baby behind. Leave the little baby cloud behind. Don't stick baby in the corner. Baby cloud. Ta da! Okay, so day one, let's review. God said, let there be light. Cool. There's light, and it is good. Day two, we need atmosphere. This is like taking forever. 
Pear Desire Sky. Oh, don't throw with scissors. That's really bad. That's a big no-no. Good thing nobody was around. Shh, don't tell me about it. Don't tell Chip, okay? I don't get trouble. I like doing this with you guys. And I don't want to. I don't want to lose my privileges of doing arts and crafts because I threw scissors on accident. Boom, there we go. Day two. Ta-da! We got light and we got the sky. Okay, but now the sky's kind of boring. What's next? What comes after two? Oh yeah, three. Day three. What does God say? God says let there be plants, land. We got sky, great, so we need land. Because, you know, sky's great for the birds and all, but, you know, what about the little pigs and the little bunnies and all the thing? It would be weird if everything flew. Can you imagine like an elephant flying or a hippo? No, it's kind of scary actually. Yeah, I don't think Fiona, the hippo at the zoo, imagining her flying. Mm -mm. No, that's kind of weird. That is a weird cream. I'm going with green because, you know, it's earth and we love our earth. And earth should be all pretty and green with lots and lots of plants. Yummy, yummy plants. Plants that look pretty. Plants that the bees like. Plants that the, let's see, what else? We got flowers for the bees. I have no idea what this one is. These all just look like bushes, like hedges. I, I don't know what we're doing. I guess we're hiding. We're gonna be hiding in hedges. Or maybe we're making a, ooh, a little hedge maze. Those are fun. But yes, those are plants. They're supposed to be plants. It's not a star, even though that's what I thought it was. But it's not. No. Nope. Like I said, have fun laughing at me cutting with my weird mouth and my... Sometimes I'll even, you know, my tongue gets in on it too. I'm just really concentrating on cutting. <clears throat> okay, there's one. One little bush. What about your house? What do you have? What do you have in your front yard or your backyard? What kind of land do you have? What kind of land was created for us here like in Texas there's all different kinds of land does it all have to be green no sometimes you know people live in the desert and it's all kind of brown but it's still cool because you got like cactus cactus are really I think cactus are cool looking and pretty what else you got ferns and flowers, like I said, and you have maybe trees and lots of trees that have like yummy apples on them, oranges. Does anybody have any of those in there? I I'm, I'm jealous. If you do, do you have any trees or bushes that have yummy fruit on them? Like an apple tree, an orange tree, or maybe like strawberries or let's see what else what's your favorite maybe a blueberries Ooh, blueberries are so good I used to visit my grandma up in New York and she has like she lives way out in like the country and she has like a forest right behind her house and that was like our favorite thing to do is we would go in the forest with these buckets 
and we would just sit there and pick blueberries lots and lots and lots of blueberries and then my sister and I would always play that game where we'd be like okay so I'm gonna eat three and then I'm gonna put one in the bucket <laughs> and then I'm gonna eat another three. Oh, and then I'll put one in the bucket <laughs> but oh those were good they were so delicious what other berries can you think of blackberries and almost there oh mangoes mm, love mangoes and papaya you know, God was so lucky that he got to like make all this stuff up be like hmm this sounds delicious let's make like blueberries and let's make like okay I'm making a red hedge just because I think it'd be weird and cool like that and then I'm seriously trying to figure this one out guys that looks like a star doesn't look like I'm just saying whoever cut these out well I cut them out but whoever made these was not being very creative no offense to the creator here on you know making these but come on look at that you could have done a little better maybe you know a palm tree coconuts come on it's the land there's so many different kinds of land except like weird star bushes I mean come on God did way better than that. <laughs> All right. Sure, that works. Let's put one there and there and there. You probably could do a better job too. Don't even like glue these on, just draw them. I make, you know, like I said, I'm gonna make like, I'm gonna even draw like a little strawberry right here. I like strawberries. Okay, that looks like pizza, but that's okay. I know it's a strawberry. All right, so day three. Review with me, ready? I know by the time we're at the end of this long, exhausting craft, we're gonna really know those creation days aren't we? So everybody scream it at the screen. In the beginning, God said, what came first? Let there be light. Oh man, messing with my bushes. And whoopsie. And on and on day two, God said, "Let there be scare, scare sky." See, I'm all ready for Halloween. Day two, we're gonna have sky. Day three, land. And so it was. And God said it was good. Day four. What are we going to do now? You know what? That sky's looking a little dark. A little boring. You know, he was probably looking at it and like, I, I don't, you know, I need some pop with that. You know, I mean, it just, it does, I don't know. I, I want, it's just, I need something. You know, y'all you, you know what we're talking about. So, you know what? Let's throw some stars up there and the moon and the sun. Oh, wait. And then you know what we can do? We can make them like take turns, right? So the sun and the moon, you know, got to be fair. You know, like if you, anybody knows, anybody has brothers and sisters and stuff, you got to share. You got to be fair. You got to, you know, can't have the sun all the time, hogging all the time. Come on, sun. When is it my turn, right? Well, I think that is exactly, see, God thinks of everything. So he 
decided to give each one equal amount of time, right? So that's why we have basically 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. Okay, I'm not cutting all of that out as much as I really, really want to right now, but okay, that's what we're getting. And then we need some backup friends. Because who wants to be in the sky all by themselves? It's not fun. I don't want to be all by myself in the sky. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's birds and all that, but, you know, I can't talk to them or whatever. No, I want, like, I want friends. And even, like, the moon, too. Come on, man. The moon would love some friends. So, what are we making? On day four, what do we have? We're going to separate the sky in day and nighttime. So everybody gets a fair share. Because remember, the really fun stuff comes next. There's a moon, there's a sun, I have a star, here he is, and a star, a star is born. All right, so while I'm cutting this, let's go back again, day one. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and it was good. God sits back and goes, hmm, not bad. Pats himself on the back. Pretty good job. Kind of proud of that. Day two. Yeah, we need uh, we need some air. We need an atmosphere. Because I have an idea of where I'm going. So, yeah, I think this is this is going to be important. Do you notice my secret on how to get that in the middle? I folded it so that I can cut out the middle of my four. So on day two, we got ourselves some atmosphere. We got stuff. And then on day three, we decided to make some land. And on day four, we're going to separate day and night. Now we're cooking. God said, Ooh, that's good. That's good. Let's keep going. Now what? Well, we got all this land. We got all this air. You know what? I think we need some ocean water water sounds good yeah let's do some water we'll have some beasts of the sea and beasts of the air now we're really cooking we're getting out the play-doh god is getting out his play-doh and he is making some awesome awesome creatures so take your time you can cut out your little fishies and color them or make your own. You can do that too. You might know a fish or a bird that's like way cooler than what these are. All right. And you know what's so fun about this too? Is what color Hmm. How are we going to separate this? Let's go, you know, we'll just pretend down here. And like I say, you can get creative. Like, I'm even going to make maybe some waves. 
Look, I'm making waves. Waves. And I'm gonna draw one of my favorite fish. Here's my favorite fish. It's like one of these guys. It's like the angler fish. I love those guys that have that little thing that hangs down with the light on it. Those are cool. Or you can make Dory and just keep swimming, swimming, or Nemo or the whale, and then you know you can talk to the whale like Dory does. Hello, whale. Oh, but don't forget the birds. I, for one, cannot forget the birds. My dad would be so mad at me. Birds are so important. I like this one. This one actually looks like a bird. Actually, it looks like a dove. Here we go. You guys are getting the gist of it. So God went to work with all his little dirt and clay and I don't know, atoms and molecules and all of his fun little arts and crafts materials and I'm going to make it like sunset kind of deal. Does that look sunset -y? I think it looks sunset -y. A little bit. Ooh, look at that. Mr. Robinson's getting fancy. That's super fancy. Let's put our dove right there. Boom. God's on a roll. The beasts of the sea and the sky. God is on fire. Making stuff now. Have you ever gotten that so excited when you're like making stuff with Play-Doh and stuff and you just never want to stop and you want to just keep making stuff and making stuff and just keep making stuff and making more stuff? All right, so day five in the books. All right, get it. Ta-da. Isn't this fun? Just listen to me rambling away. There's so many different animals. You know what I would do too? Oh, if I could fit it on here, maybe a narwhal. I love narwhals. Narwhals are like my favorite. Or a seal. Or penguins. All of these are awesome creatures we can put on day five. Right? Five. All right, what comes next? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, that's right. Six. Woo! All right. God's getting a little bit, a little bit tired. A little bit. Just a little bit. He's like, nope pushing through. I can do this. I got this. Okay. So these are all cute and all, you know, with the birds and the fish, but you know what? These plants are kind of lonely. These plants need some friends. So you know what? Let's make some beasts of land. The beasts of the land. So you'll notice we have little piggies. There's like frog. What else do we have here? A bunny. So take your pick. Has anybody ever been to like a zoo or like a petting zoo? Or like a, one of the safari places or whatever? And noticed how crazy sometimes those animals are. Mm -hmm. They are crazy, don't they? Especially when they're like, I'm hungry and I want food. And they're always whining and you don't know what they're saying. 
and they're just being so weird. So, you know what God decided then? He's like, you know what? I definitely need somebody. That's right, somebody to be in charge of these animals because they're getting a little bit out of control. So, you know what? I'm gonna make man. Here he is. Okay, I don't know what happened to his arm, but oh, I know, okay. My arm's looking a little bit weird. I know, I'm trying fast as I can. Woo! Don't get too crazy. He's gonna lose an ear. Ooh, oh. Okay, are you gonna make it look like you? Go for it. All right, so remember on day six, God made a lot of the beasts of the land, the ones that slither and all those fun little uh, adjectives, right? They slither and they stomp and they go oink, 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 and all of that. And then the land got like really crowded with all of these animals and God was like, whoa, what did I do? I got a little carried away here. I'm going to need somebody to like, you know, keep an eye on all these guys because it's, oof, it's getting a little bit weird. So I'm going to put this guy in charge. Boop. And a bunny. Boop. Yep, phoning this one in. Definitely phoning this one in. But that's okay. I can come back. I'm going to come back to it. With my cute little man that I can put like, I don't know. Maybe put on like leaves. What kind of clothes would you put on them? I guess they wore like leaves. Maybe then they wore like, you know, after he had dinner. You could put on like a fur or something. There we go. Day six. Oof, almost there. All right. So in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And so it was, and it was good. Then God said, Let's make sky, let's make an atmosphere. Let's, let's bring this together. And so it was, and God said, it was good, not bad. Then he said, we need something solid. So we're gonna make earth, we're gonna make land. And so it was, and God said, it was good. Then he said, you know what? I want to switch it up a little bit, you know? We need, we need a little sun. We need some moon. Give them both equal time. We need day and night. And so it was. And God said, boom. And there we go. Land. Beasts of the air. Beasts of the sea. Sprinkle all of that in there. Cool. Lastly, God said, let's put some more animals out there. Let's put them on the land. Slithering and stomping. And what's your favorite animal? Right? Monkeys in the trees. Those are some of my favorites. And when things started to get a little crazy, he created man. Now at this point though, God got pretty tired. He was just like, whew, that was a long day. That was a really long day. And, you know, even, how are you feeling right now, right? Coloring, gluing, cutting. I'm getting pretty tired myself. I'm just saying. I'm, yeah. 
So after all that was done, God sat back, looked at all of his creations, and said, hmm, not bad, God. It's pretty good, pretty good job. And then he decided, you know what? Let's go ahead. I think it's time for a nap. Definitely nap time. So on day seven, God looked at everything, saw that it was good. He was pretty satisfied. He thought, hmm, I love all this stuff. I love my animals. I love my day and night. I even love my little platypus. And I love man. He's going to take care of them all. And I think everything is going to go good. I think it's going to be a great, great earth. So you know what? I'm going to take a nap. And that is exactly what he did. On the seventh day, God rested. And now, so can you. And me. I'll see you for the next craft. I'm going to take a nap now. Ugh. Oh, that's a pretty cool craft. I love the colors and I love different parts with the numbers. It's awesome. It's a good way to remember what happened on the days of creation. Well, how about we go over to Pastor Steve and Mike in the sanctuary? I think they have a cool song about God for us to sing with. Um, let's go join them. I'll see you in a little bit. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And love all you mankind as you have loved yourself and love the Lord your God. With all your heart, with all your soul and mind, and love all the mankind. We've got Christian lives to live, we've got Jesus' love to give, we've got nothing to hide, because in God we all abide. Milk! Drink that milk, look, 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 look. Read that word, read, 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 to get stronger. Mr. Postman gave to me a copy of the NIV. Read the Bible to get stronger. I don't want to wait any longer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And love all the God's kind as you have loved yourself. And love the Lord your God with all your heart. With all your soul and mind and love, all of God's kind. We've got Christian lives to live. We've got Jesus' love to give. We've got nothing to hide because in God we all abide. Milk! Drink that milk, look, 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 look. Read that word, read, 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 read. To get stronger. Mr. Postman gave to me a copy of the NIV. Shalala. Read the Bible to get stronger. I don't want to wait any longer, love. Well, welcome back, friends. Next, we're going to talk about the second part of the creed, which starts with, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. Well, Jesus um, had, did a lots of things in his life. But one of the most memorable stories and probably the real reason that all of us are Christians is because um, after his crucifixion, Jesus did something pretty cool. He came back. Let's go hear all about that story, that Easter morning story. Uh, let's go to Miss Sue and she'll share it with us. Thanks, Chip. I know he's been talking to you guys about the Easter story, and we're going to read a story today called The Empty Tomb. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The women didn't even notice the sky. 
They hurry to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh. They had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The women kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the women could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brr, it was cold in there. Drip, drop, it was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is the place for the dead and Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said, go tell the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus's friends what they had seen and heard. Oof, Mary bumped into the man and tripped and fell at his feet. Wait, she knew those feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait, she knew that hand. She looked up and yes, she knew that smile. It was Jesus. Hello friends, Jesus said. Jesus was really alive. The woman hugged his feet and shouted with joy. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive. Go tell the others the good news, Jesus said. I will meet them in Gal Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. The women had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone Jesus was alive. What would you have done if you were one of the women and saw the angel in the cave? What would you have done? What would you have thought? Those are the kind of questions that people had back then. So see you tomorrow. Thank you, Miss Sue. That's a great story. Now, one symbol of Jesus, something to help us remember Jesus, is a cross. I think Mrs. Robinson is going to show us how to make a really pretty cross so that we too can remember Jesus. I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks, Chip. Do you feel better from your nap too? That seventh day, I'm all rested now. Okay, so we talked about God and the creation. And one of his best creations was Jesus. And one way that we remember Jesus is with the cross. And it's known as like a symbol where, where it symbolizes. Cause you know, people are really hard to draw. I hate drawing people, but you know, a cross is really easy to draw. And, and whenever anybody, I think whenever most people look at a cross instantly, you're just like, Oh Jesus it's like they kind of go hand in hand so that's what we're going to do is we're going to make a cross to help remind us of god's greatest creation jesus so what you have is like this sticky paper and this is going to take forever so the most of this time is going to be you and your part your friends or whoever you're doing this with trying to peel this paper off of the sticky stuff. I even have these and I couldn't do it. My claws could not get this off. Okay, so I'm not even gonna go on and on about that anymore. It took a long time. <laughs> Ta-da! So be really, I'll see you already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the really important part. Make sure that the sticky side is up. 
okay? You don't want to stick it to the table. And don't sneeze right now, okay? Because again, ta-da! It's my favorite, it's confetti. So not only are we gonna make a cross, we're gonna make a really pretty cross. And it's going to remind us, kind of like the crosses in church that they do on the windows, the stained glass, and it's all the different colors of the rainbow. And oh, it looks so pretty. And when the sun shines through them, I love it. You can be, use your personality. You could be extremely organized and, you know, just stick paper, 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 however, or, you know, it's me. I'm thinking, you know, a party, just all, see, bam, ta-da, la, 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 la. Make sure that they get all separated too. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking, trust me, okay? I'm taking all of these little pieces of tissue paper. What's in tissue? It just sounds funny. The tissue paper. I'm still wondering why I say it that way. It was probably somebody that I knew, and it was probably Sunday school or something that somebody said, take your tissue paper and I thought are they sneezing or why do they say it like that that's like really weird hey that's not bad so just stick and stick and have fun and stick and there you go kind of like that right but wait Mr. Johnson that doesn't look like a cross does it no it doesn't so this is what I'm gonna do in your little baggie you have a piece of paper that has a cross on it Ta -da! isn't that nice so we're gonna use it as a stencil and we're gonna cut our sticky paper Okay, seriously, I love this. This will be fun. I'm hoping this will work. I think I got enough of the non-sticky around. There we go. So very carefully, see how I'm doing this? Is I'm cutting. Okay, I put the cross on top and I'm like cutting the sticky paper in the shape of the cross. You know, that is a good point. Maybe I should do that. Just so my cross doesn't move around. I'm just going to put more sticky stuff on here. Because we all love sticky stuff. Ta-da. There we go. Now my cross isn't going to go anywhere. And I'm going to cut around the shape of the cross. Ooh, i got to figure out, too, what I'm going to do with all these leftovers because that's gonna be fun. Give it a turn. And again, make sure your tongue, you know, that when you cut, you gotta always, I think it increases the accuracy of your cutting is when you're really making funny faces when you cut. Um, just, yeah, it's a thing. can ask mom, dad, brother, sister, whoever, to cut like one. See what they do with their one. Oh, see? Okay, almost there. Top. Spin around. And here we go. When you guys get older, you're going to do, you're going to graduate to confirmation, which is the super secret class for when 
you get into middle school and you're going to learn all about a lot of the promises that Jesus made and Martin Luther, who is why we're called the Lutheran Church. And you're going to learn all of these, kind of like the Ten Commandments, but we're going to learn, we do it in church all the time, called the Apostles' Creed. We have all these different creeds, which basically are kind of like promises, right? And the one that this is supposed to remind us of is that we as people believe in Jesus Christ and that Jesus is God's son. We, we have to say it. We say it out loud. We promise it and we say, I believe that Jesus Christ is God's son. And, ooh, I'm happy. That's pretty. Oh, it looks like a pinata or something. Or something. Okay, so, oh, did I just do that? No, no, here it is. Okay, good. So, it's, we don't have all the papers doing exactly like what that one did. You're going to take the other paper, the sticky paper, and very carefully, you might want to get help with this. I always miss this kind of like when you put like the thing on your phone, the front of your phone to protect it from, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. Now we're going to put the sticky down like so. <gasps> it looks pretty. So we can make it look like glass. Oh, look at that. Mmm, loving it. Okay, I think I got a little too excited. Nope, there we go. And ta-da! All we're gonna do now is do the same thing. Follow your pattern of the cross and we're gonna cut the sticky pit. This one's gonna be harder because it is actually like really sticky. Follow my lead. Snippies. One, arm, and stickies. What do you guys think? I think it looks so pretty. And if you notice too, it makes it look like it's all like see-through that you can like maybe put it on a window and see if it will like shine like glass. Oh, I'm really liking this. Almost there. Top. And finally, boom. And we have a nice pretty stained glass cross to remind us that Jesus is God's greatest creation. Oh, that's so pretty. I really love that cross that she made. I wonder what yours look like. Please feel free to post them on social media. Well, let's go here with Pastor Steve and Mr. Mike are singing in the sanctuary all about Jesus. I'll see you in a little bit.
will follow. Now we we'll listen. I will listen. I will love you. I will love you. All of my days. All of my days. And I, I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore him. I will bow down before him. Cause you're my Prince of Peace and I will live my life for you. You are holy, you are holy, you are mighty, you are mighty, you are worthy, you are worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of praise. And I will follow, I will follow, I will listen, I will listen. I will love you all of my days, all of my days. You're the Lord of Lords, you're the King of Kings, you're the mighty God, Lord of everything. You're the living God, you're my saving grace. You will reign forever, you are ancient of days. You're Emmanuel, you're the great I am. You're the Prince of Peace, who is the Lamb. You're the Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. You're the Savior, Messiah, Redeemer, and Friend. You're my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. You're my Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. Thanks, guys. Well, friends, the last part of the creed we're going to look at starts with these words. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, hmm, the Holy Spirit's kind of hard to understand sometimes. Um, but th there's a cool story in the Bible about when the H Holy Spirit first really showed up in the lives of the apostles after Jesus left. Let's go to Miss Sue and hear this Pentecost story. I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks, Chip. I know he was talking to you about Pentecost, so we're going to read a story about that today. It's called the Holy Spirit. Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew, blew through the house. Everyone's hair lifted up and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other. It looked like each disciple had a flame of fire touching him, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come, just as Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages, languages, languages they'd never learned. Stranger yet, they could understand each other. Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus taught them. He told them how Jesus died and lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's Spirit guiding us, Peter said. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's Spirit. This was the very beginning of the Christian church. Remember to learn to say thank you all the time and in different languages and see how that affects the people around you. Have a great day. Wow, that's a pretty cool story. I think Mrs. Robinson has an even cooler craft for us. Let's go talk to her and see what she's making. It's me again. Taking my nap after we talked about God and the creation. And then we talked about his greatest creation, that is Jesus, his son. And 
We enjoyed our beautiful little sting, Les Cross. And now we're going to talk about, this one's hard. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know, everybody just looked at me weird, I know. Okay, so think of it this way. So you know how like we can't really see God, right? He's kind of invisible. And you know, it's like, I know it's kind of like Halloween and you guys are, we're in Halloween mode. So it's almost kind of like we're saying God is almost like a ghost, but he's not really a ghost. We say spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So it's kind of that whole thing of like, he's invisible, but yet we know he's there. He's there. And in the Bible, we use the dove to represent the Holy Spirit that is God. So what I want you to do is you get your piece of construction paper, this, this red. Wow. Just kind of lost all my colors there for a minute. We're going to make what's called a wind sock. It sounds really weird. I know. So yeah, it's a sock for the wind. And it's to represent, like I say, it's like the wind. It's invisible, but we know it's there. So first thing I want you to do is take our symbol of the Holy Spirit, our dove, and we're going to glue it onto our red construction paper. But again, we want this to be super special. Okay, this isn't just any dove, okay? It's not like a dove you're gonna see downtown, you know, eating the crust of pizza, you know, that kind of thing, they're everywhere. No, this is, remember, this is a symbol, this is a special dove. This is the Holy Spirit dove. So, how are we gonna make this look special and not just an ordinary dove. Well, that's where this comes in. We're going to make it look like, like like magic glittery rays coming off of it. You know, that's what make it kind of special. We're going to like highlight it. So this is all I did. Again, this is just, you know, remember, it's just kind of like, you know, like unicorns where they have like the little rainbow, how it looks all glittery and all that makes it look all special. Well, same thing. This is what I do. Just make like literally little curly strips or however you want to do it. That's what I did. I made like little curly strips. I just did like that. And then, you know, here's my curly strips. And I'm going to glue these all around the dove so that we're making him special. That representing the Holy Spirit dove and not just a plain old downtown dove. Not that they're bad or anything. I mean, I like the downtown doves. They're really kind of fun. They keep you company, feed them stuff. They talk to you. They make that really cool sound where they go coo coo coo, make the coo coo. But there we go, our special. And my glue, I know it looks purple. I'm sure you guys know this though, but you know. Starts out like that, but it's gonna dry clear. Okay, yeah, just like the scissors, I'm just throwing stuff everywhere. Okay, here we go. So this is gonna be like the top part. This is our sock. And the fun thing about this is now we get to, I kinda of wanna wait till the glue dries, but we wanna make a cylinder. Hello, like a paper towel roll kind of thing. And um, maybe you can ask for some tape. I like tape. Because glue, it's going to be a little weird for it to stay because you're going to have to hold it for the glue to dry. So I'd ask for maybe, see if we can borrow some tape. But you can glue it if you want to. See, I'll show you. You can do it glue and then just stick it. So we have our 
Holy Spirit. Now, the other cool thing about a wind sock is how do you know the wind's there? Because it blows stuff, right? It blows things around like chimes and ribbons, maybe? Like, ooh, see? The wind. And again, I'm going to cheat. Ask and see if you can borrow a stapler. Okay? You might need help. All right? You might need to be, you know, this is an adult supervision kind of thing. Sometimes I even need to be supervised with these things. I'm just saying. But what you have are these flames. And what these flames say on them are all the promises about and from the Holy Spirit. Understanding, fortitude, knowledge, wisdom. You know the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Tomato. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. That's the difference. Counsel and fear of the Lord. It's reverence. You gotta show them respect, right? Because I mean, hello, it's God. You can't just walk up to God and just be like, hey God, what's up? No, you gotta show respect. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our stapler and we're going to staple our little flames onto the end. So that it's like a little thing. And then each one of these we're gonna staple onto our windsock. I did this hard because I twirled it before. You know, you probably wanted to staple them on when it's still flat, but you know, I'm an advanced crafter that I can do that. No, I'm really not. So do that with all the other ribbons. Staple our little flame on. Always watch where you're going. Don't staple your finger. Have you ever stapled your finger? I think I did it once. I think I stapled my finger once. Mrs. Robinson is what you call clumsy. I do things like that. Okay, we're going to be wise not put tomatoes in our fruit salad. And I got knowledge. Council's on there. Whee! This is really fun. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Put them on like get like several ponytails. Put them all. I could be a windsock. Like I could be a windsock. Just hang them all on. Or like, you know, with the pageants. You know, like one of those things that they wear like this. Okay, let's see, we got knowledge, fear of the Lord. What else one do we need? We got two more. Understanding and piety. Okay, I know how to say it, but I have no clue how to explain what it means. It's kind of like, it's, it's a little different than respect, but it's like, you know, when you're, like when you're praying, that's really kind of what piety is about. I'm seriously concentrating because I will staple my finger. I really will. All right. So now that we have our flames, we're going to staple them to our pen sock. I guess, but you might be like my son who decided to put out those little, um, what are those little, sol the little solar things that you put like on your sidewalk? And he actually got the tape measure out and he actually measured. He got the full measurement of the sidewalk and then he actually measured each little foot to make them all perfectly even. Oh, did I just lose one? And okay. How many more we got? Da 
that. Understanding. Just trying to make sure I'm not running out of room. I think we made one of these before. Didn't we make like a fish? Yeah, I think I remember this. We made a fish. I like that I made a red stapler for my red windsock. Okay, one more. Come on, staple. There we go. And last one. And if you've been playing along this whole time, you now have seven beautifully decorated numbers that represent the creation because God created everything. And one of his greatest creations was Jesus. And we made a pretty cross to show and represent and symbolize Jesus. And now you have ta -da, a beautiful windsock to represent the Holy Spirit. It's cute. What do you think? It's good. I like it. It's nice. Okay, have fun. That's the whole point. Have fun. I love that wind sock. I think I really want one in my office. Maybe I have some space somewhere over there. Well, anyway, um, let's go to Pastor Steve and Mike. Um, and they have uh, some songs about the Holy Spirit for us as well. I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome, Holy Spirit, I am in your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit, I am in your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside of me. You're my living water, my ever-flowing fountain, my comforter, my counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit, I am in your presence, fill me with your power, live inside of me. Thank you guys for joining us today on this journey through the creed. I hope you learned a lot. Now, get ready for our next big, big event. We have Advent Adventures coming December 5th. Look for, for announcements online, on Facebook, and sign up. All right. I can't wait to see you all. You all have a great one.